Thank you for joining me here today. I'm senior injury correspondent and investigative crash journalist Jay Dalton, and we're here live on scene at Milford Skate Park. The second best skate park in Connecticut, only to West Haven Skate Park, the greatest Connecticut training facility the world has ever seen. Today, we're here to ask the hard-hitting questions. We're here to get to the bottom of some of the most catastrophic <laughs> incidents. Today, we're going beyond the crash compilation. We're here to answer the question that's on everybody's mind. Anytime one of these catastrophic incidents happen to my uh, fellow co-host and stunt rider, Jay Dalton, how the heck did he make that happen? As I said before, we're live on scene here for one of the first incidents, the infamous Sprocket Taco incident. Oh my God. That poor, poor sprocket. I did interview the rider before I came out here and he said he did in fact think he had it. But as you can see behind me, quite a substantial gap all the way from this rounded bit over into that corner pocket where it says gray 5G. It's a mural from one of the finest graffiti artists that Milford has to offer. As you saw from the clip though, he definitely did not have it. Now in this case, it all boiled down to the approach angle. When he was scouting it out, it looked like if he took off right on the R, it would give him the perfect amount to just make it over that chasm, no big deal, and then proceed to not be able to stop and smash into the metal fence. But he didn't think about the fact that in order to get that angle, you'd have to ride up on the corridor, and that takes away a bit of the kick. Jay told me it wasn't until he was in the air he realized his mistake when he was speeding towards the coping, about to eliminate his machine. Now something you're only gonna see here live on this channel, we're bringing you an up-close look at the impact crater. Look at that. So impactful. We've never seen hard-hitting journalism quite like this. That was just the first of many in-depth breakdowns that we have lined up for you today. I'll meet you back in studio after the short commercial break. Do you like eating food? Do you have access to a microwave? If you answered yes to either of those questions, you should check out the sponsor of today's video, Factor 75. Factor is a meal delivery service that delivers fresh, never frozen meals straight to your door. Perfect for anyone out there with a busy schedule or just somebody who likes to eat and doesn't like to cook. You can pick from a wide range of meals that Factor chefs have put together. And all you gotta do is take the box inside when it shows up at the door, throw the meals in the fridge, and when you're ready, take one out, throw it in the microwave, it's good to go. There's plenty of variety, they update the meals weekly, so you're never gonna get sick of eating the same thing over and over again. If you wanna try out Factor, you can head down to the description and click my link, or head over to go.factor75.com and use the discount code that's on the screen to save 50% off your first box. Thank you very much to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now back to the extreme crash analysis. Welcome back. Next up on the agenda, our investigation brings us all the way back to July 2018. Over to Woodward, Pennsylvania, where Vans was hosting one of their Pro Cup qualifier events. Unfortunately, during this qualifier, my bicycle riding counterpart, Jay Dalton, had another very interesting crash. Might even be more puzzling than that first one. Dalton, crazy. I held Jay. We held each other and we just bawled. Oh. Now after interviewing a few spectators from the event, some people thought he was going for a flare, some people thought his brain just shut off. There's a lot of theories floating around. I did question the man himself and he requested that I inform all of you what actually happened. At the time, he said when he would enter contest, he'd get a little, a little too hyped up. He'd try to ride and put on a show for the crowd instead of just doing his own thing, doing what he knows how to do. You know, sometimes you go a little bit faster, you try to go a little bit higher, try to do a little bit cooler stuff. That's not a good recipe for him. The original plan for this era was to just do a nice, super floaty, real nice, click look back. Nothing crazy, no insane combos or anything, just one trick. But in this case, he wanted to put on a show for the crowd, so he came in about five miles an hour faster than usual. Little did he know that was five miles an hour too fast for that quarter. There wasn't actually enough time on the ramp to compress with my legs and pull back with enough force to actually like come out and do an air how you're supposed to air. So he was still pushing through with his legs and pulling with his arms and the ramp just disappeared. So the back wheel kicked completely through, blew through the ramp and sent him on a little bit of a half flip thing that um, was unsavable. <laughs> In classic Jay Dalton fashion, there was no bail. We hold on, we go down with the ship. Went for the biggest people's elbow the world has ever seen. But yeah, that's the story. There was no crazy stunt going down, no nothing. Just had a little too much speed for the quarter pipe. 
Now we're gonna take our investigation down south a little bit, all the way to the great state of Florida, over in Spring Hills, to this beautiful prefab metal skate park. Some of you may be aware of this crash, some of you may not. It was pretty explosive. We tried to launch a little quarter-quarter transfer over no man's land. Didn't quite go to plan. That's why this guy never makes videos. <laughs> oh, Jay, you're done. Now, believe it or not, I did not plan to kamikaze myself into the side of the ramp. My counterpart thought I had it, or thought he had it. I don't know why I was talking like that with me for a second. There were a few more factors at play than meets the eye. That original takeoff quarter was probably close to four feet behind the landing quarter. So in order to make the gap properly, you have to pull out with the amount of force to go four feet straight back from the ramp, but also about 20 feet in distance. Jay did not generate sufficient force to make that happen, so instead he decided to just send himself pedal first into the ramp and explode his brand new magnesium pedals. Even with my professional investigative background, I have no idea how he managed to get out of that literally unscathed. He was fine. He just kept riding with a broken pedal. We'll be back asking the hard-hitting questions right after these messages. Thank you for staying with us. We're now gonna move on to the saga of the knee injury. This is bringing things back even farther. What would be Jay's first major injury and the reason behind why he switched up certain parts on his bike? In this case, we're back at Woodward once again after a whole day of riding, very successful day. Oh, you need some milk. <laughs> Jay decided to end the session in Lot 8 with some nice casual air out tricks that look good for the camera before he went on down the hill and went to sleep. Now it might seem like he was going for a super sick, super Indian, no grab arrow, and he only just lightly slid out on his knee. Do either of those things are true? <laughs> now this could have been just a little bit of absent-mindedness, or the fact that he had bald shoes and bald plastic pedals. But the moment he took his foot off, the foot that is not supposed to come off just super easily slipped off. And that sealed his fate. There's no coming back from that especially on the BMX bike. And even though the fisheye makes it look like not such a big deal, that ramp is 10 feet tall, and I was probably nine or 10 feet above the top of it. I mean, Jay was the rider. And he landed all the way at the bottom, the bottom sheet. So it was about a 20 foot drop, straight impact onto the kneecap, and I ended up tearing his PCL, making him unable to walk for about a whole month, and needing some slight rehab afterwards, getting back into stunting shape. Now, like I said, he did learn a few lessons from this. One, don't ride bald shoes. Two, never ride plastic pedals again because they're evil. Now there is a sequel to the knee incident, a little bit more of a flashier stunt. Not even too much later when Jay thought he was ready to ride. He and Jamie Barnhart decided to bring a little kicker ramp all around camp and hit some spots that aren't normally doable. It's actually a really cool video. I'll link it if you want to check it out, but Woodward people don't watch that. Not allowed to watch that. Uh... <laughs> But eventually a day had them bringing the kicker ramp into lot eight, lugging it up onto the bowl section, and using it as a little speed skipper into the roller so that he could try to jump off of this super vert three or four foot kicker across the wessel wall and into the other side. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. Oh. Oh. Now that clip kind of just makes it look like he forgot how to jump. There is an argument to be made for that, but just like always, we're gonna break it down. Now watching it back in slow-mo, even though it's ugly 30 FPS slow-mo, you can see he took off a little bit awkward and didn't have the best re-entry into the roller. Now that caused him to not really be able to handle that quick G out, going down the roller and then back up the mini kicker. So he kind of got what we call stuck in his pump which means he could never really fully unload his legs. The force was always there, so he could never get set up to take off again. Since he wasn't set up to take off, he got kicked by the awkward slant of the ramp. There was no saving it after that. <laughs> he came up short completely sideways, and that sent him into another knee bomb death spiral. Oh. All the way across the nice, smooth, concrete floor of Lot 8. Now the aftermath of this was a re-injured PCL. But let that be a lesson. Do not ride before you're supposed to be riding. I don't know who could relate to that. I, I don't know anybody really who's injured right now, but you know, if anyone out there is injured, words of advice. I found this next one while I was researching for one of my many other documentaries. It didn't quite fit into the last production, but it was a pretty funny crash, and I feel like it's better unexplained. I'm just gonna throw it in real quick before we move on. Oh, I missed that. Oh, way too 
close. Oh. <laughs> That's a dialed rider if I've ever seen one. Next up, we're heading to the Great White North, up to Toronto for the X-Jam back in 2018. I feel like a lot of these happened in 2018. He was having a good year for crashes. <laughs> this event had a very cool course set up, and Jay decided to take advantage, try to link some transfers together and flow around the park a little bit different than everyone else. Unfortunately, he bit off a little more than he could chew on this straight jump, like, push-through setup air thing. He was trying to figure out a trick to do afterwards on that tractor trailer. <laughs> Such a confusing scenario. We're gonna get to the bottom of it as always. During my interview with him, Jay told me that this is the first time something like this has ever happened to him. Keep in mind, he is left foot forward, and in this situation, he had to go so straight off the side of that ramp in order to have enough distance to make it to the other ramp that he actually slammed his pedal into the lip, and that sent him into the crazy bailing front flip tumble that you guys saw just now. Yeah, he was not going for the front flip. Nothing crazy, it was just supposed to be a setup jump. But that's what he told me. These random things will come and bite you when you least expect it. These next crashes are part of the series, part of the front flare series. He's had some of his most dangerous and craziest crashes on one specific stunt. He's tried his best to understand it for a long time. So far, it just has not worked out. The front flare. Just so everybody here is on the same page, a front flare is when you go up a quarter pipe, you do a front flip and an air out at the same time. So that's called the flare. Flip air. He's only had a few incidents on Resi, and that was basically just when he was learning them. But every time he tries to take it off the Resi and do it on the real thing, it just didn't want to go according to plan. He's got one <laughs> catastrophic incident in Cloud9. And then another when he was really feeling like he had it figured out over in Lot 8. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> now during our talk, he did say these were pretty demoralizing. It's a really weird feeling when you're 1000% confident whatever you're about to do is gonna work out and it goes literally as bad as it could possibly go. The problem is pretty obvious when you look close. Well, you notice in both of those clips, before the ramp, he kind of swings the other way, like he's setting up for an alley-oop. And on this trick, when you set up for an alley-oop like that, it steals all of your pop, or your, like, your, your pull-out of the ramp. So when he sets up alley-oop and tries to do, do the thing, he's not generating any force away from the ramp, and he's just kind of pushing into and over the ramp. In the case of a front flare, you want all of the out that you can get because it's pretty catastrophic if you don't get the out. Oh! In the Cloud9 one, he also got completely disoriented, so you can see there is a point he's just staring at the ceiling. So at that point, he realized he did something horribly wrong. But that one was a little bit different. You can see he was fully locked into that landing to perform that perfect penguin slide down the ramp. You can't pull something like that off when you're disoriented. I don't think I've seen a better penguin slide in all my years of investigative journalism. Jay said after those two incidents, he decided to keep it on the quarter to bank so that the outward pull is not as important. You could land a little bit farther back. Uh, what? Oh! You're not head tube casing on the coping. But he did say there may be a day in the future where it magically starts to work out, so stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see some front flare redemption. Might as well hit that bell icon too, because if he does send it, YouTube may or may not want you to see that. They may not want you to know. But if you hit that bell, you'll know. Thank you all for joining me on this wonderful journey of crash analysis. I've been your host for today, Jay Dalton. And hopefully, we'll see you next time on the Jay Dalton channel. Myself and Jay Dalton, the bicycle rider. I'd really appreciate it if you left a like. Drop a comment if I forgot any spectacular crashes that you remember. Quick injury update, even though I'm not the rider. I don't know if you can see that. We're in the home stretch, even though I said that last time. I feel like this healing has been in slow-mo, but maybe because I'm old or that maybe because this is a very fragile repair. I have one more doctor's appointment actually coming up in like a week and I may have been illegally riding mountain bikes to ease myself into it very safely. Very safely, we're not rushing anything. Let's just say we're, we're nearing the end. This, is, this should be the last uh, in-studio video that you'll be seeing. The next one is gonna be on wheels. We're gonna be in motion. But thanks for sticking around. Thanks for sticking with me. I'll see you then. So, goodbye.